is Tuesday morning, 9.30. It is KCIM Sports Rewind time. That's why Sports Director Jeff Blank and the KC Miners are in here, not just because of my sparkling personality. Well, hold on. Let me turn on your microphones. Okay. Are you sure? I feel like the half an hour would go quicker if I turn on your microphones. <laughs> if it's a might. one-sided conversation, it might be a really long well, half you hour. You can just let KC's on and yours on. I'll just stay quiet. No, no, no. You fill most of the time anyway. So, yeah. A busy week last week. Yeah. For you guys racing between uh, just Merchant Stadium here and uh, Harlan Rogers Park up in Fort Dodge. But fun week, no doubt about mm-hmm. that. So, uh, we're going to dive into State baseball and softball. Did want to start with this, though. Uh, Jake Belt did text us and said, uh, great turnout for their youth yes. tournament in Breda. So, yeah, way to go for you guys up there. About almost 40 kids, I yeah, think he said. Yeah, yeah. So, congratulations to them. They put such hard work into that and do such a tremendous job of putting that on. So, that's good to see that we've got some young kids interested in getting back into golf and kind of maybe regrowing, uh, you know, the sport mm-hmm. of golf here in the area a little bit. So, cool. Cool to see. Yeah, like you said before, that uh, there were days when every top-ranked team in the state was here in Carroll County. So yep. we kind of want to return to some of that uh, going up there very soon. So, uh, Also, we're about a month away from college football. August 31st, Crazy. I just looked at the Cyclone schedule over there. They've got North Dakota August 31st and so that's July 30th. going to be an easy one. Not going to be an easy one. That's all I'm saying. Not going to be an easy one. <laughs> the Fighting Hawks. Uh, yes. Yeah. Rolling into Hilton or to, Jack, to Jack Tri Stadium there. So it's going to be fun, though. The four, uh, just a month away, some, the, the college football season is going to be crazy i think this year yeah i literally recorded last week's uh, big 10 media days and uh got a chance last i'm sure night. you did the same casey right <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, i've got this handy little thing called twitter and social media i just look at the clips i don't i don't i don't have yeah. to go back home and watch the whole thing to figure out what matt rule had to say about the huskers well but you know you get clips you don't get the whole story you yeah. don't get what all the players that were there said and i'd like to watch all the other well, coaches as well well i i, I watch kirk ferentz's <laughs> press conference did you too. see that kirk ferentz got interviewed by jay higgins i did <laughs> yeah. i did yeah, yeah. i also all saw american line Linebacker. Yeah, and I also saw it, and I'm drawing a blank on his name. The, the new coach at UCLA was very uncomfortable oh, yeah. having to be yeah. up in front of, uh, you know, the media. But, yeah, I finally got a chance last night to sit down and watch about the first hour, hour and a half of it. So mm-hmm. I got about five and a half hours to go, and and, uh, and I'll get through all of it. So. <laughs> wow, this, this is what he does in his spare yeah. time, folks. Yeah, yeah. yes. So, so Iowa offense. Kirk Ferentz is bullish on this off new new offense, supposedly. I heard him making some comments saying, hey, we could be a really good offensive team. Yeah, and that's where you, you get the clips and you don't mm-hmm. get the whole story. He also said that there's an awful lot of work to go in the next four weeks. Oh, no, there's going to be. Gonna be. I go. mean, you, yeah. when you're the, yeah. la- the worst offense in the country the last three years, <laughs> you know, if you go from if, if we go from 130 to 100, it's growth. Yeah, it's growth. Absolutely. You know, hey, with, with that defense, you're a yes. national championship contender. We were 128, so I I'm mean, right there with you. So. We've won. We've won 10 games the last two out of the last three years with a crappy offense. So. Yeah, 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 and we've won less than six with turning the ball over and losing a lot of one mm-hmm. score games. Yeah. So yeah, so. Yeah, you got the uh, Kirk Ferentz way of doing it and the anti-Kirk Ferentz way of doing it out there in Nebraska. So, yeah. but, but Matt Rule's got some great uh, recruits coming in. He does. I mean, he's been yep. hitting that trail hard, and a lot of folks are starting to say, okay, starting to pay attention a little bit. Yeah, David Sanders Jr., the uh, number one offensive lineman in the nation and number two player in the, in the uh, recruiting class, was there this weekend. And um, he had a verbal already to Tennessee, and now they're kind of getting nervous that they think they may have lost him. That's what I was reading some stuff on a Tennessee website last night, and they think they may have lost him. I don't think he's gone. I think he'll end up going to Tennessee. But cool to see that that level of player mm-hmm. again is coming back to Nebraska and at least giving mm-hmm. it a, a good thought. And I think that hopefully – uh, will bode well for the future. Now, I think if they can get some W's this year, they could win seven or eight, and I'm not saying they're going to, but if they could win seven or eight and show that progress, I think all of a sudden you start to see some of those guys starting to actually come into town. Yeah. If you ask everybody, you're going to be undefeated going into Ohio State or something like that. Seven. Is the, a lot of people think you're going to be like eight and zero going into yeah, Ohio State. That that is the stupid, you know, national <laughs> media people. That ain't Oscar yeah. fans saying that stuff. Yeah. That's that's all the national media people talking like that. So. But it's going to be a fun college football season with it all should. the new rivalries and matchups and things like that. It's it's we've never seen this before. I, I'm looking forward to it a lot. I, I am too. It, it'll be interesting to see. 
you know, how the Big Ten plays out with all the, the, the four new teams. It'll be interesting to see how the Big 12, you know, where does Iowa State fit in this year with, the, you know, the Utahs and the, you know, the, the Colorados and, and, and the Arizona schools that are coming into the league and how do they fit into the mix and how does Oklahoma and Texas, you know, sit yeah. with, with the, the SEC and what happens with Florida State and Clemson? I know they're not out before this season starts, but they've got the lawsuit where they're trying to sue the ACC and get out, so... Yeah. Well, how does that play mm-hmm. out? Well, when next next off season might be as crazy as what this one mm-hmm. was. So yeah. I, I think Colorado is one of the more most interesting ones because I mean it's basically a brand new team every year with Deion Sanders. Yep. And how long is that experiment going to last? How long are fans going to want to say, okay, let's just blow up the team every year. We'll just pay a bunch of players to come in and then, and and we'll be winners. I I, just don't think it's that easy. I think this year will determine it. If they have success and make a bowl game, win seven, eight, nine, 10 games, I think you'll, you'll see this trend of how he wants to build it. If they win three or four games, five games or something, and don't go to a bowl game and it looks like it's not working. I think then you'll start to see the, the, the people out there start to turn yeah. a little I, bit. I don't know if it's the fact that he wants a new team every year. I just think that they bring in 50-some guys from the transfer portal every year, and probably 30 of them aren't seeing the field throughout the year, so then they end up transferring, Listen. and then they bring in 50 more guys. And it's, I was going to say, you can't, you, know, you can't hit yeah. on all 50. Yeah, yeah. You're going to bring he's in lost, problems. He's lost a lot of starters, though, yeah. to the transfer portal because of, you know, hey, you're not quite good enough, get out of here type mm-hmm. of thing and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, he's... He's constantly. It's it's like for him. It's the it's the NFL free agency, and he's just trying to go out and sign as many free agents as what he can every year. So and a showcase for his son, at yeah, quarterback. I mean, that's basically I what that is. I won't be totally surprised if he's not gone after this year or next year anyway on his own accord. And and this was a stepping stone. I know he says he loves it out there, but what coach doesn't say? I mm-hmm. love it where I'm at while they're secretly. I mean, heck the. Texas A&M baseball coach took him to the national championship game in the press conference yeah. said, I'm here. I'm, I'm an Aggie. And like Next less than 24 left. hours mm-hmm. later, he's already gone, you know, so I, and, and I'm not blaming him or anything. I'm just saying there's not a coach out there that is, that's going to say, yeah. yeah, I'm looking around. I'm, I'm well, look at, look at, and look at Kalen DeBoer at Washington took him yeah. to a national title and, and left, left, left for Alabama. You know, yep. it's, it's a, you, you want to, you want to get that better job. Yep. Yeah. Brian so. Kelly leaving Notre Dame to go right. to LSU. He wanted right. to win that championship. And, and all of a sudden adopted a southern accent once he got down there. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, college football not that far away. But uh, we got to wrap. We got to let's talk a little high school football here. You guys hearing any rumblings out there of uh, anything? And when do camps start and, and all of that? Oh, well, they're they're not this week. Uh, this is week. week. It's, it's this a dead, is dead week. week right? So they'll, they'll start next week. And uh, yeah, I think Casey and I are both very excited. I think we've got a chance to have some really good football teams a here lot, in the area. A lot of our teams bring back key pieces from last year's yep. squads, and I think a lot of our teams finished, I think all of them finished right at a 500 or above 500 or above last, last year. year so, so, you know, it's going to be a very interesting football season. Yeah, I, 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 Kemper probably looks mm-hmm. like they could be pretty elite this mm-hmm. year uh, from everything that I'm hearing and stuff. So not to put any pressure on them before things get started, but they seem to be the team around here that everybody's probably talking about the most. But I think we've got to, the chance to have some really strong football teams in the area. Yeah, I don't think it's you guys that put the pressure on the teams. It's the fan bases that right. put the pressure on yep. all the teams out there and things. So who else is looking like they might, I mean, they could really have some kind of a special year. I think I came in you got to throw in there. Yep, uh, I, think, I think Audubon. Um, I, you, look, you, you look at Audubon, Audubon's district's going to have Audubon, Glidden, and Coon. Right. And all three of those teams bring back you know, either their leading rusher last year, their you know one of their top receivers, you know, four guys on their defense. But I was looking yesterday, and every single team in that district, I think it's eight man district two right. or something like that. Yeah, every single one of those teams brings back either their leading rusher and their leading receiver. So that district is going to be crazy really this year. Really good. Yep. You know, uh, but you know, I expect Coon to be improved. They were playing good football. You know, at the end of last year, yeah. uh, and really came on. I think Caden Oswald could have a really big year for him. Uh, you know, that district's. I think it's going to be crazy good. I, I like what our Weaver could do mm-hmm. if they can stay healthy. They're not going to have a lot of numbers. Like they're probably never going to have mm-hmm. a lot of numbers again. But uh, you know, I, I think they've got the potential to be really strong this year. Um, I I'm interested to see what Carroll does because I think Carroll's got the potential to be strong this year. They were banged up last year. They were year. banged up last year, and I think that they're going to be healthier this year. I think it'll be interesting. The only question I have, and and it's not an, on them, it's 
The rest of that district last year kind of had an off year. Um, you don't see those Northwest you know, Iowa schools I was kind of off years two years in a row very often. I've just so. been kind of going through stuff, you know, getting ready for football season. And a lot of teams lost a lot of their good guys from last right. year. Yep. Yep. So Elon graduated almost mm-hmm. everybody. Yep. Yeah. And, and But MOC brings back a lot of the like, MOC was a good team last year and they bring right. back almost everybody. So right. I, I think MOC is probably the favorite in that district. And plus the familiarity with the teams. I mean, they've been playing each other for four straight years now. Right. Yep. You know, the last year that they're probably going to be in the district unless the state for some reason decides to decides put them again to again. Keep that district yeah. Exactly the same again. You yeah. Know, so. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Carroll's going to be interesting. I think you bring back Carter Essek, uh, Reese Sigmund, you know, missed some time last year. He's going to be back. Yeah. You know, that those are the two you're probably going to pound on offense a little bit. So Yeah, and you know the defense is going to be mm-hmm. good. So No coaching changes on the football side of things? Um, Craig Lynch, of course, has stepped yeah. away over at, oh, uh, right. you know, yeah. at Glidden Ralston. And, and uh, uh, Dave Prescott, I understand, is going to be the new head football coach over there. And uh, Austin Stolk was a co-head coach in the past at Arweave, and I understand that he's going to be solo as the lone head coach for the Rockets this year. Other than that, haven't heard of mm-hmm. any changes yet on any of the staffs. So All we right. should be good to go. How about the volleyball side of things? If we're looking at fall, I know Carol High's got a new volleyball coach, you said. We do. Yeah, Carol High, uh, Riley Ludwig, former great player from up there uh, in Setter, is going to be taken over there. Carol Peter, who won a state championship at Kemper, is going to be taken over at, at our Weva. Um, so those are the two new coaches that I'm aware of as of right two, now. Two young and good coaches yes. that have had a lot of experience on the volleyball court are going to be back in, the, back in the community, and I think that's good for us. Yeah, absolutely. Bodes well for the future. Yeah, so. it'll be interesting to see what Kara Peter does with the Arweva program then. I mean, what does she take from the Kemper program to try to build that program? Right, more? and I know she's put a lot of time in this summer, as has Riley, um, you know, kind of already starting, you know, the, the work on the fundamentals and, and all of those things. And, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, I I didn't do a whole lot but travel this weekend. So once the, the baseball and softball, I haven't started really digging in, you know, to the fall teams mm-hmm. too much. We'll, we'll I'll start – Looking at the dates for our preview shows where we'll interview our coaches here this week and and uh, we'll get that stuff figured out. But uh, yeah, I've, Casey's probably already started to dig into it. But yeah, I haven't digged into uh, volleyball that much. But you know, yeah. K- Kemper's K- Kemper's going to be Kemper. Kemper's going to be you know, Kemper. They, they yep. always reload. I, I think it's going to be this is might be a different Kemper team than what we've seen. Right. Because we're used to Kemper having those tall girls at the net that can really swing and and stuff like that. But their back row play might be the, a strength. It's for a very, yes. very good strength it for them this year. Very strong last year, and it, yeah, got a lot of a lot of those back. girls are back. Yep. You know, yep. and, and so. I think it's going to be tough having to replace Franny and Casey Peter and Aubrey Hutton and Lauren Bell. You know, Olivia Schenkelberg and Brandon Wittrock are going to have big shoes to fill, and I think yep. they can do it. But yep. you know, you're going to have to find that third or fourth girl that can yep. come in for you. And uh, they always seem to have mm-hmm. them developed and, and yep. ready to go. Yep. There's another Peter coming up mm-hmm. into it, Colby, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, you know. It, it'll be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's not that far away. When does practice actually start for the fall sports season? Next, next week. week. Next week. Man. Yep. So it's yeah. yeah, it's almost here. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. It's yeah. uh, you need to download that sports app. I keep telling everybody all the time on the air. It's like download that if you want to be ready for the sports season. Yeah, that's what you need. Yeah. And Casey actually called me yesterday, and he goes, "Have you got the volleyball schedule done yet? When are we starting to go around all of the different yeah. scrimmages and and all that you know, stuff that are going to be starting?" Yeah, Jeff's soon. wanting to break, and I'm like, "Let's get going." <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to roll. We're going to talk Ottoman softball here coming up next on KCIM Sports Rewind. As the athletes at your house prepare for hard work and fun of the season, remember that St. Anthony Rehab Services provides physical therapy for any sports injury that may sideline your member of the team. Sports injuries can plague kids of all ages and keep them from playing the sport they love. Athletes will be under the direct supervision of a certified and licensed healthcare professional in the newly renovated sports performance facility. If an injury is keeping your athlete out of the game, call St. Anthony Rehab Rehabilitation Services at 794-5000 for sports injury and treatment rehab. All right, KCIM Sports Rewind, and I hate to say it, but I just didn't really have time to look up a trivia question, so we're going to recycle one. Have from we the, done it before? Uh, well, no, we, not okay. that we've had it before. I just okay. It's an old question. It's not very timely. Okay. <laughs> Baseball All-Star Game. Okay. So it's a couple <laughs> weeks old. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bruce Bochy on, uh, became the second skipper in Major League history to win an All-Star Game in both leagues. 
He was the second. Who was the first? Well, I wouldn't I'm know. Say Sparky Anderson. That's what my guess would have been. Would okay. have been Sparky with the Reds and, right, and, and then Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, you, you couldn't be more wrong. Okay, so, Jim yeah. Leland. No, because no, he was Kim only Jim in the United. Would, would Joe Madden be be somebody like that? No, nope, not Joe Madden. He was with the Rays and, and in the, Cubs. the Cubs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Joe Torrey. Cardinals? Nope. No. Cardinals nope. and Yankees? And, um, and when I give you the answer, you're going to go, well, yeah, Tony, obviously. Tony La Russa? Tony La Russa. Yeah, yeah. Tony La Russa, Oakland and uh, St. Louis. Yeah. 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 And, and it's obvious, too. Right. It's like, yeah. wow, he did. Uh, he was phenomenal in both areas. So, yeah, but yeah he, was the, uh, he was the first to do that to win an all-star game in both leagues. Phenomenal, absolutely, but couldn't beat my Cincinnati Reds in the 1990 World Series, Could baby. Could not <laughs> stand him. Being a Twins fan, I hated the Oakland A's, yeah. so I yeah. bash brothers and all that. And I yeah. said, I never liked Tony La Russa. And then he went and joined the White Sox. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. There's the, the perfect match. I don't like the White Sox either. And he so. was there before he went to Oakland, if I remember correct. Wasn't was he? he? I think he, he, well, he, well, he won. He, Beno, he, he got Sox fired and, yeah. from being the White Sox skipper here recently. Yeah, but I think yeah. if I remember correctly, he was at, with the White Sox, then went out to Oakland, then to St. Louis, and then came back. And then back to the to White, the White Sox. Because he, yeah. he ran the White Sox into the ground to what they are today. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he was a lawyer before doing any of this. Right. He actually has a law degree, but uh, the baseball thing worked out pretty well. Yeah, one of the great coaches, you know, oh, yeah. whether you like him or not. He, he, he got won, results. Besides the second time with the White Sox, he pretty and who wins a lot with the White mm-hmm. Sox anyway? I know. Yeah. They, they, they should never win as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, Audubon Softball, let's talk about that. What a run. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a crazy way to get to the championship game by winning two in the last inning. Yes, yeah, special run for them. Um, what a great group. I know Doug Waniger said it to me. He called me after the championship game the other day, and we chatted for just a little bit, you know, the next morning. And he's like, you know, he says, I hadn't seen him before the regional final. And then he did the first two state games and then had a family event and couldn't come up for the championship game. And thanks to Mark Fieldmeyer for helping out there. But um, just a special group. These are really good kids. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you grow a connection to that team. I think if you watch it a couple of times, there was a connection with that team because they, they just there was a no quit attitude. They worked hard. Um, I was and, saying, and was there just confidence really, in those late innings that they oh, knew yeah. that they could? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was like, it's not like this is a fluke. No. I mean, you even saw it in the bottom of the seventh against Van Meter. The yeah. first two, for the, I mean, what, they had got an out and then two quick outs, and the next yeah. thing you know, you, it's, a, it's a base hit and a base hit, and all of a sudden you got girls on second and third. You know, you're right, yeah. back, you're right back in the game there in the yeah. bottom, in the top of the seventh. Yeah, tying run on the base, you mm-hmm. know, in the seventh inning in that championship game. Um, it, it just no quit, and I think that – they get some of that, I think, from from Coach Schwery, um, mm-hmm. and and just some of that from you know themselves. Uh, but you know, just what like you said, what a special run to to win the regional final in the bottom of the seventh, and then to come back and win your opening round game, the quarterfinals at the state tournament in the bottom of the seventh, and then they have to well, you know to give up a lead and then have to come back and do it, and and then mm-hmm. kind of same thing in that uh, you know in the semis they're down two to nothing going into the whole the game, semi, you know going into the seventh, and it, I know Doug kind of leaned into me during one of the breaks, and he goes they're in trouble, and and I'm like. They are at the same time, though. I've I've seen this out of them mm-hmm. quite often this year, and and uh, you know you you knew until that last out was done that they they weren't done because they weren't going to quit. Yeah, two big Wiggins wins to get them to the state finals and their first ever trip to the state tournament, let alone the state championship game. And uh, what a great game that was too. Yeah. yeah. And played, I thought Van Meter I, the uh, yeah. most of the game. I, I think they struggled when Van Meter switched pitchers. They did, you know that. Yep. I, I think that was evident because the girl that came in, you know, after their starter was thrown a lot slower. And I don't. I think they, you know, until yep. that later in the game, they really struggled to catch up, to adjust to the change of speed. Yeah, and I talked to Jordan Porsche in the post game, and I asked her about that, and she said that you know the girl that came in second threw a lot more like what the pitchers did in the Western Iowa Conference, and she thinks that they got anxious thinking that they were going to be able to just hit her and hit her well and you know kind of went up there and probably just weren't as focused and and kind of swang swung early and you know Mm -hmm. those kind of hurt themselves a little bit but give her that young lady a lot of credit she came in in a tough moment you know tough moment you're 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 down in the championship game your your star pitcher is struggling and walking people and and giving up some hits and you know you're down three to one and and audubon had all the momentum and and uh you know, she came in and, and shut the door until that seventh inning and didn't give up any runs, but gave up some hits. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a crazy way to end that one because I, I saw this thing. We were up in Fort Dodge, and I happened to see up look up the TV. They were showing on it, and they were up two to one. And I thought, right. you know, Van Meter was hands down the consensus pick to be like I, they're going to walk away I, with. I think it. if you talk to a lot of media people, Van Meter might have been the best team out of. All, all five classes, arguably. Arguably. Well, and, and you, you look at comparisons. Um, Carlisle edges ADM in the 4A championship. Van Meter played ADM earlier in the year and beat him 13-1. to 1. You know, mm-hmm. so it kind of tells you. I, mm-hmm. You know, I said this on the air, you know, with Mark the other day in the championship game. I think if you'd have asked anybody that was there that wasn't there, like to us, to cover Audubon or hadn't, you know, wasn't an Audubon fan, I think 95% of the people would have said Van Meter, and a lot would have probably said Van Meter maybe easy, but not mm-hmm. because Audubon's not a really good team, but they had handled a lot of really good teams mm-hmm. easily um, throughout the season. And I, I'm not going to give away the name, but I was talking with an official from the union uh, before the game started, and, you know, m- they mentioned something about, you know, their statement was, well, this has been pretty special for Audubon, your first time ever getting to the state tournament, and you take second. And that was before the championship game was even played. So wow. that was mm-hmm. kind of, I, I, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about it, I think that was what most people were thinking. And if you'd have went to those people going into the bottom of the sixth inning, they would have said, I think Audubon wins this. You yeah. know, they were up three to one going yeah. into the bottom of the sixth inning. So. How many jaws would have dropped had that score stayed the same? Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, but a tremendous effort. Um, I had so much fun getting a chance to. Oh yeah. You know, to to cover that those games, and and I think you enjoyed mm-hmm. shooting the video and and getting mm-hmm. the video highlights out. And we thank Jeff Storyhan for going up and taking photos of the uh, the quarterfinals and then the finals. And you know, so we had a crew of people up there, and it was wow. Yeah. Um, had been to state softball to cover a team since Glidden made it when Lauren Mulberg and that group uh, made state about a decade ago. So that was ten years. Wow. Yeah, that was a long yeah. while eight ago. To, then. Eight yeah. to ten years ago is what we're figuring is how long ago that was. So. I tell you, you can maybe make your plans for next year. I mean, those Ottoman team, they they returned yeah. just about everybody, don't they? No, they graduated no? six seniors. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. So they're gonna, but they're 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 gonna return. But they have two key pieces coming yes. back. I mean, yeah. you bring back Riley Miller and Taryn Peterson. And who don't are your, forget Anna Larson yep, out Anna, there and left. Anna, yep. Anna Larson out there and left, but you know Riley. Hit fourth, you know, was dominant in the circle for him this year. Taron played short, was their two hitters. So, you know, you have two big key pieces to to, hit, to move around. Then Anna, you know, you expect, you know, played her freshman season with Audubon, now played this year with the two schools combined. And then, you know, next year expect her mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, just imp- just improve more. And, and, and Andy's such a good coach. I feel like she'll have girls ready to go next year. I th- honestly think she outcoached a lot of the coaches she coached against up, mm-hmm. up at the state tournament. Um, and I don't think she'll take credit for that. But, you know, you look at the first game against West Monona, a team that hit the ball really hard all year long. So she played her outfielders deep, very deep um, and stuff. And that threw them off because they were so used to being able to hit the ball over somebody's head. They didn't know mm-hmm. how to not hit it deep. So everything that they were hitting was an easy fly ball because the defense was right there. And then, you know, just some of the moves that she made in the Eddieville blakesburg Fremont game in the semifinals. And, you know, uh, give them, give her credit for coming up with, you know, Van Meter's going to want to bunt and, and run a lot. Well, they didn't get an opportunity to bunt and run a lot because of the way they pitched mm-hmm. the Van Meter hitters and kind of forced them to not be able to lay down the bunt and everything else. And what Riley held them to two hits, I think, going into the fifth or sixth inning, yeah. if I remember mm-hmm. right. Um, so you imagine how good she is right now as a freshman. She keeps getting physically strong. Oh, and, and you and, know, and, stuff and, and you know that she was probably probably took yeah. the weekend off. I was right back at it. Yeah, I you don't know. even know if she took the weekend yeah. off. I honestly, <laughs> I, uh, she was. She wasn't. She had cried, of course, but she wasn't crying. But when I interviewed her in the post game after that championship game, there was a sadness, but I think there was a little bit of a disappointment and an anger that well, that, that she, that, that especially when, with that two run home when run, when she gave that up she that two run up. home uh, home run that gave up the kind of you know gave Van Meter the lead. I think she was upset and disappointed, but she's like, let's go back at this. Yeah, and I think that mm-hmm. probably by Sunday morning, um, she was probably. Doing something. I mean, heck, we found out Cal Hayden was doing a workout just a couple of days <laughs> yeah. after the baseball season, yeah. you know, was over. So uh, the special ones, they don't. There's, there's not time off. They, they maybe give a little bit of time, but mm-hmm. they get right back to work.
Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, Ottoman's going to be there next year. You know, at least going to have another good season next year. Yep. They're, they're primed for that. Who else in the softball area has maybe got that young talent to maybe make a move next year? Because uh, the rest of the year was 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 a struggle for the teams. It was. It, it was kind of a tough year a little bit. I like the way our Weaver played late in the season mm-hmm. um, and stuff. I think they're going to be good. Coons, another one that jumps out to me. Almost uh, they lose Brilly Clayberg, but pretty much that entire starting lineup is sophomores, um, and, and you got to figure Anna Hart returned this year after the broken foot and the broken a ankle and is going to be healthy from the get-go um, and stuff. So I, I, I think Coons got a chance to take some pretty I, good steps I think forward. Kemper's going to be good next year, yep. too. I mean, you lose big pieces, but you do. But there's you a, got lot, Miley a lot of, a lot, a lot of young girls around. on that team. Yep, so. absolutely. There's there's some really good talent to build around. Um I can Manning just continues to get a little bit better down there. You know, I'm not saying state tournament for them or anything next year, but you could see some major improvement mm-hmm. for them as well next year. Yeah, they season. had a rough so, start to their season. I mean, did. it was very yeah. up in the air until the last moment. Yes, yeah, and and they're still young. I mean, they didn't have it really a senior getting playing time, you know, and stuff. So um, that that's going to be a program that's that's going to come on. I think ESAC with their young pitching. Will have a chance to improve. Yeah. Graduate um, a lot of seniors. Yep, they do. But uh, they're they're going to have a chance to improve in the circle um, as they as they get older. And you know, uh, for South Central Calhoun, they're going to. It sounds like they're going to have to find a new coach. And hopefully, they can go out and find somebody that's going to be there long term. And I know that comes from talking with Emma Anderson. You know, who had played there and everything. She's they they need to find some consistency and find a coach that's going to be there and start with the youth programs and and build their way up. All right, State Baseball, let's talk about that real quick because uh, two champions crowned here in Carroll. Great showcase for Merchants Park. Uh, talk about the State Baseball Tournament. Casey, you were there on championship day. Yeah, I, I mean, the 1A game might have caught people off guard because uh, Linville Sully kind of handled St. Mary's, Mary's you know, pretty easily. 7-1 was the final and struggled against uh, the Holman pitcher, who I believe is a D1 kid. Not sure if right. he's going to Iowa, but the last couple of times we've seen him, there's been Iowa scouts there for him, but... Uh, so, yeah, that kind of caught me off guard. And then Underwood, you know, kind of uh, – I don't know if you saw how the game ended, but we were driving back from Fort Dodge, and uh, Mark was telling me that the kid in right field dove for the ball. They weren't sure if he caught it, but ended up calling it a catch and then tagging a guy out at second for a double play to end the game. To end the game against New Hampton. So, yeah, yeah no, I didn't get a chance to see how, how that one ended. I was probably sitting at the restaurant trying to write my story <laughs> <laughs> from from the Audubon game uh, and stuff. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, it was a fun tournament. I, I got to be out there. A lot of close, good games. Yeah, I think I was out there part of Monday, mm-hmm. um, most of Monday pretty much. Um, I think I was there for all four games on Monday. Then I was out there for the two games Thursday. Thursday. Otherwise, with state softball, I didn't get a chance. You probably yeah. saw more of the state baseball tournament than I did. But yeah, uh, I mean, had the longest game in state baseball tournament history. Yeah, you know, with uh, Remsen and uh, uh, who they play in the second. Who they play in the second in, round? In the in the second round, that would have been uh, Newman Catholic. Yeah, Newman yeah. Catholic. So and went almost innings. Fourteen innings. A rain delay in there. An umpire change and. Yeah, almost like, took five hours. Almost took five hours for that game to get played. So uh, yeah, yeah. I understand everybody left that stadium about twelve thirty. About twelve thirty yeah. that night. So yeah, I, I think your volunteers are a little wore down uh, mm-hmm. and stuff. And you look at what you know Underwood did uh, fall down five to nothing to Sheraton in the first inning. They were down seven to two at one point in that game, and then they rally back to to win their semifinal round game eight to seven, and that gets mm-hmm. them into the finals, and then able to win that championship. So congratulations goes out to them. Yeah, great uh, showcase. Once again, Town of Carroll did a tremendous job. This was the last of a three-year contract. I can't imagine the association saying, yeah, we're going to move that anytime Yeah, you, soon. you talk to the guys from the association and gals that come here and work the tournament. Uh, Carroll puts so much into it, and I tip my cap because it's a lot of the same people that volunteer every year. Uh, but, you know, they, they get more volunteers probably than what they need. But what that makes it do is it, it makes it run really smooth and really easy mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and, and stuff. So they do a tremendous job. And I can see it. You know, I can. Yeah, you're right. This was the end of a three year run. But I don't think it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. I can't imagine that that would be the case at all. So Underwood captures the 2A crown. Linville Sully, the 1A crown. Uh, dead week. I mean, everybody's taking a little breather this week. I, yeah. I remember when they first instituted this. It was like they moved things up, and now now kind of settled into this whole thing, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Um, you know, I, I still think that, you know, you talk to the summer coaches and the season feels too fast and too crammed together, and, and, and I think – you know, for fan well, bases, I would almost wonder. They're changing wonder that next year now are. with 
24, 24, 24 dates. dates. Yes, so that that'll be the that'll be the interesting thing. I, they're not changing the amount of games you can play, but they're changing the amount of dates. They're limiting the dates. So I think you're going to see a lot of more, more weekend tournaments. tournaments and stuff. I think you're going to see, you know, Kuhn did it earlier this year where they played somebody at three and then played, you know, I.K. Manning at seven that night after the, you know, or at four. I think you're going to see more of that. You might see 11 o'clock games and then, you know, 5.30 or 6 o'clock games Split that night. Split double headers. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 it'll be really interesting because you're going to have some coaches that are going to say, okay, we'll play 24 or 24 five games and then you're going to have some that are like no i'm still playing my my 40 games and i'm going to find mm -hmm. a way to get my 40 games mm -hmm. in in those 24 dates yeah that's going to be uh, interesting to watch in the yeah. next few years that is for sure and so that's you know the end of, and i know we're running yeah. a little bit long here but john hayden talked about it at the state baseball tournament you look at the teams that were at the state baseball tournament they're the teams that are playing the 35 to 40 you know games a year it's not the teams that are playing the 20 to mm -hmm. 24 and games they're generally a year. you know the solid programs yes. that are built up year after year right. that and have that tradition right and that's part of the reason why they can play more games is because they they're in a baseball heavy town and 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 more kids, the kids out the, for the game the kids don't mind playing all the extra games and, and everything else so yeah. if you can schedule i mean why not if you can schedule a game at noon maybe a game at seven o'clock if you've got the kids the numbers yep without wearing down your athletes you know why not yeah i like them better at five o'clock than the seven o'clock i'll take that <laughs> 11 o'clock start and then the 5 30 the 5 30 start give yeah. me a noon game what yeah, the heck absolutely casey and i'd love to go out and broadcast some noon 11 o'clock yeah. noon games yeah yeah you get to bed a lot <laughs> earlier than that you normally get to bed at so that is kcim sports rewind for this week once again catch a podcast available on the website here coming up in just a few moments